preliminary points or applications. For two reasons, Mr. Speaker. The research fundamental and weighty points of law, Mr. Speaker, and some have, of course, raised uh, issues of fact, whether service was effected or not effected. Mr. Speaker, if you were to determine these issues, it would bring to a determination of the entire impeachment proceeding. That means you would have abrogated yourself the function of what the Senate is supposed to be doing. Consequently, you should bring these points to a vote by the House, Mr. Speaker, and by the Honorable Members of Senate. To Mr. Speaker, there was an application on the issue of a protection of a witness, a key witness in these proceedings, Mr. Speaker. It's my very considered uh, opinion, Mr. Speaker, that that protection should be afforded to a witness who feels vulnerable, Mr. Speaker, because of the nature of the offenses that have been uh, brought forth, Mr. Speaker. But while giving that protection to this witness, Mr. Speaker, there must be a balance as to how that protection is given. For instance, Mr. Speaker, and if you are guided by the Witness Protection Act, Mr. Speaker, we could take off the proceedings from camera with respect to that uh, witness, but ensure that uh, senators have an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to hear the kind of allegation so that you balance between uh, the witness not being hidden away from the accused uh, governor, Mr. Speaker, and the senators who are supposed to be judges, but you also ensure that the witness is not exposed to an extent that uh, reputational damage would appear or would occur, Mr. Speaker, in the event that uh, the evidence she's adducing is, is true. And whether that evidence is true or not will be determined after the witness has been heard. So we should balance the two, Mr. Speaker, but ensure that the witness is protected because of the nature of the offenses, Mr. Speaker. With those remarks, Mr. Speaker, I would urge you to allow the senators to vote on this. I will not. Senator Munyahaji, fuck. Uh, Sante Mwishima Speaker, kukulipa fursa hii. Kimsingi ni kwamba mawakili wa gavana wanataka maswala haya ya muliwe kabla ya kusikizwa kwa mashtaka ambayo ya hapa na assembly ya kericho. Mwishima Speaker, tukiangalia uh, bunge ya Senate napokaa kuangalia maswala ya impeachment ni kama mahakama na katiba yetu inasema katika kifungu cha 159 na kwamba uh, inapo mahakama zinapokaa haki ya muliwe bila ya kuzingatia maswala magumu ya ki procedure na vile vile pia ki teknikali uh, if I may read it in English, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that justice shall be uh, administered Senator, without undue. Senator, uh, Senator Faki, uh, yes. choose the language you'd wish no, to For the benefit of the. Samani, Mr. Speaker. You started with Kiswahili, proceed in Kiswahili. Samani, Mr. Speaker. Kwevuna, Mr. Speaker, Swala Lilo Kombelia Bungeli la Seneti, Nikwamba Seneti Iamue Maswala Amboya Meletra Yamifikisha Meliake bila ya kuzangatia mambo ya ya kiteknikali kwa sababu tunapozingatia mambo ya kiteknikali tutapoteza ile fursa ya kuweza kutenda haki ya kimsingi jambo la pili mheshimiwa speaker ni kwamba bunge la senate linapiga kura kutokana na maswala ya delegation kwa hivyo hili ni swala ambalo linaathiri counties na kwa maswala yote yanaathiri counties uamuzi huwa ni kwa ni wa kupiga kura wa zile eh, delegation 47 ambazo ziko katika bunge hili. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker swala la ku wewe kukata kwamba swala hili halikutimizwa ama swala la quorum halikutimia katika bunge la Kericho la bunge la county ya Kericho mheshimiwa speaker hapo utakuwa umekiuka katiba na vile vile pia umekiuka kanuni zetu za bunge hili ambapo zinasema kwa maswala ya uamuzi iwe ni kwa sababu ni maswala ya Delegations and bazo ziko katika bunge hili. Asante sana mwishima speaker. Senator Karoche Tabitha. Thank, thank you Mr. Speaker. Sir, for giving me also the opportunity. And it's true, I agree with my other 
senators, there is an issue when it comes to the, the law, that is section 33 of uh, county government acts to really verify and know whether we, the numbers that they said, I mean the MCAs that uh, approved this motion, whether they met the threshold. But uh, I'm lucky because I happen to have, exp I mean, uh, co continue with my maths where you, re you reach a point where maths and science go together. So when it comes now to 31.3, the science math says there is no half person, so it should have been 32. The point three is always becomes a whole person which it should be 32. But now the other big question is, if uh, this motion is returned back to the county assembly, how sure are we that it will not come back within a, a, a week? So I think we are now again uh, not uh, very sure whether we are going to save uh, or hurt the people that brought this motion here. But it is true, we've not met the threshold. It should have been 32 not 31. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Senator Sifuna. Uh, Senator Eddy, certainly you cannot rise on a point of order. There is no senator speaking. Senator Lominen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, as I've listened to uh, uh, the councils from the both sides, Chair, we have a heavy duty to do in this uh, uh, Senate House, and we need time. Uh, Chair, if you see the voluminous books that are with us, there are many, there are many contents that we have to listen before we make a, we make a ruling. Chair, I will want to urge this House and you, uh, Mr. Speaker, to give us an opportunity as senators, our judges, to make a, a, a ruling of, of this issue of appeal by making a vote. And then we continue from there, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Senator Wamatenga. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, indeed, uh, we are invited as senators to do justice to a matter brought before us. But even before we do that, Mr. Speaker, it is our duty and responsibility as the whole country and the whole world watches to ensure that we do justice to matters that are come, come before us. Mr. Speaker, sir, it has been cited that decisions have been made and precedents have been set. But that notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, it is also imperative that we interrogate that under which condition those decisions and precedents were set. Mr. Speaker, sir, as an engineer, I know that lounging numbers to the nearest is a common practice. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are invited in this matter not to look at the case before scientifically, but to look, to look at it as is required using uh, the jurisprudence, uh, prudence, jurisprudence that have been set before. Mr. Speaker, 31.3 cannot meet the threshold. And therefore, I think it is imperative that we as senators move a motion and decide on this matter, determine this matter, even before we go into full hearing, because that is the responsibility that we have, and it is what people expect of us, and it is what we must do as senators. Mr. Speaker, the role of these senators sitting here, when they come and sit as juries, we must make a decision whether the prerequisite uh, preliminaries have been met. If they are not been met, Mr. Speaker, then we must return matter to the sender so that they can meet the threshold and we can be able to be sitting in a matter that is supposed to be sat for by this House. Mr. Speaker, sir, I submit. Senator Eddy. Senator Eddy. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we're invited to do uh, in this house on two substantive uh, POs, Mr. Speaker. One, I cannot belabor, Mr. Speaker, 
we cannot be gagged by decision of court from doing our job. So I think that one we are in tandem, Mr. Speaker. On this issue of mathematics, Mr. Speaker, you are invited to make a decision which I think that it is the House that should make. One is a practical a question and the other one is a mathematical question. Practically, Mr. Speaker, you cannot have a fraction of human beings reduced to the lower number. And mathematically, Mr. Speaker, I think that it is a question that probably would have needed a judicial review even long before it came to this place, Mr. Speaker. Because constitutionally, this question of two-thirds has never confronted the country. And Mr. Speaker, the only time that we see it, and especially from the cases that has been presented here, is the case for, for Tana River, Mr. Speaker. So as a house, I think it behooves us to go with the larger question of what has been determined in court. And what has been determined in court as per now, without a judicial review, is the case for Tana River, which then can be the only legal basis and legal framework that then we can be able to use to question this practicality of numbers. But that said, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to urge the House that because this is a very serious issue, Mr. Speaker, and the people of Kenya would want to be heard, perhaps the determination of these two POs should be, should be done with the other substantive issues that have been brought in the House so that senators have got a chance to make uh, observations at the end of this entire process so that those preliminaries will form part of the conversations and uh, as we go through the charges and this matter be heard and then we make a determination at the end, Mr. Speaker, because if we don't, then you'll be invited to a very dangerous path, Mr. Speaker, whereby you... Senator Oroba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to add my voice about the Victim Protection, Mr. Speaker. In the Victim Protection Act, Section 8, it says that any victim has a right for privacy and protection. And therefore, because the proceedings here will be broadcasted, Mr. Speaker, I believe we have no choice but to follow the law and ensure that Section 8, Section 10, and Section 11, particularly on the issue of disclosing the identity of the victim, are taken care of. Mr. Speaker, on the matter of... Uh, the two-third threshold, Mr. Speaker. This is a house of procedure. We are guided by procedure, and we have our standing order. Our standing order says on the procedure for removal of a governor, within seven days after receiving notice of a resolution from the Speaker of the County Assembly supporting the removal of a governor, pursuant to Article 181, then the proceedings begin. Mr. Speaker, in that sense, we are, why are we even debating this? There is no opportunity in our standing order where we are told, go back to the county assembly and check if the threshold was met and check if the allegations were actually substituted. For us, we are, we are, we are quasi-judicial uh, uh, process. They have reached here. As long as we have the notice of resolution from the speaker, from the county assembly, our work is to proceed. And for those who feel that the threshold was not met, Mr. Speaker, they can go to court and proceed with that argument there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Asige. Thank you, Speaker. I have two observations to make. It's my understanding that the Kericho, Kericho um, County Assembly co consists of 47 members, and Article se Section 33 of CGA requires two-thirds of the votes uh, are needed to support a, an impeachment motion, which means that the county assembly needed 31.3 votes. And further, if we use the Nkaduda versus county assembly of Tana River case, we can infer, because of jurisprudence, that a natural person cannot be fragmented into a fraction. And therefore, the logical thing to do, of course, would be to round off the decimal to the nearest round number. And the nearest round number in this case is 31. Speaker. We are here as a quasi-judicial hearing, 
And I see us, of course, as judges, very, very um, strongly so in this case. And speaker, I also see us akin to scientists um, who have been given the mandate to deal with this case with precision. This is a laboratory, Mr. Speaker, and we are all scientists, and we have been called to make a very fine cut in this, uh, with these POs. Speaker, science has laws. There is the law of gravity, law of motion, the law of um, the Mendel's law, the Megan law, several laws, Mr. Speaker, and those are absolute. They cannot be moved. They cannot be um, uh, wished away. Similarly, Speaker, the High Court has ruled through this jurisprudence that, um, that you should uh, uh, um, calculate to the nearest round number, and that, Mr. Speaker, is law. It's, it's through a court of law, and I think that we should continue in that way. 31 has been met in terms of votes, and therefore we should, we should um, listen to this case further and uh, listen to the substantive issues therein. Speaker, also, you have been invited by the Governor's Council to mirror the decision of your counterpart in the National Assembly. I feel that is out of order, Speaker. You are not a conveyor belt. You are not somebody who regurgitates what the Speaker of the National Assembly does or says. You are not a parrot of the National Assembly Speaker, and therefore being invited to mirror a decision that... Senator Seki. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also stand to put my voice on 